shows tremendous support for the process that we're undergoing here. One thing that I would like to do as we start is explain the process that we used yesterday and we'd like to use it again today. Um, you should have been given at least one index card as you came in and what we'd like for you to do is in your action plan, your executive summary, the recommendations, suggestions, and proposals are all numbered in there in the left hand column under the action, action plan. We'd like for you to write down the number of the recommendation, suggestion, or proposal that you would like to have addressed. And beside that number, place the page number in the action plan on which it appears. If you'll then pass those cards to the aisle, we'll have someone collect them and get them over here to Sally. Sally will then get them in order, and we'll try and address them in the order that they appear in the action plan. If you have a particular question regarding that, that item in the plan, what we'd like for you to do is when that item comes up for discussion, please raise that question at that time. It's, um, it was difficult yesterday for me to get all the questions organized according to item numbers as they came up. So I want to be sure you have the opportunity to get your questions answered. So if you'll just take a minute now and write down the item, the suggestions, recommendations, or proposals that you'd like to have addressed, and the page number that they appear <coughs> in the executive summary. has been uh, an extremely rigorous process here at Thomas Nelson and I would remind you that the SAC self-study is a committee report. It's an evolving issue here at the campus. It's a way for us to address issues that we need to look at and it only the self-study only occurs once every 10 years so it's a, a rather time-consuming process as those of you who have served on the committee are very much aware. Um, our college has completed a self-study process of which we can be very proud. And I want to thank each of you who have been involved. Uh, the involvement for no one has been small. It's been very extensive. A self-study at its very minimum is based on the must and should statements in the criteria for accreditation from the Commission of Colleges of the Southern Association. For every must statement, which our self-study has shown we do not meet, there will be a recommendation. The flip chart over there shows that the must statements will evolve in a recommendation. Recommendations must be addressed. For every should statement that our committee has come forward with, there will be a suggestion. The suggestions are things that the Southern Association would like for us to address. We have gone further than the Southern Association requires in identifying proposals. Those are things that our committee has decided we need to do it here at the college, and if there is any way possible, we would like to address those. For these need-to-do areas, we've formulated proposals, and that's a step beyond what the Southern Association requires. We've also um, addressed the self-study requirements in a little different format than some colleges have chosen to by adding to the steering committee a committee called the Planning and Implementation Committee. The Planning and Implementation Committee 
is designed at Thomas Nelson to be college council. The recommendations, suggestions, and proposals that we have proposed in this action plan will go to college council for them to act on, for them to consider. What I will serve as the chair of the planning and implementation committee and will serve as the catalyst that sees that each of these are at least looked at. We will address all 10 must statements and we will attempt to address all the should statements and we will certainly respond to all the proposals. Today, this <coughs> campus-wide meeting is scheduled so that we can respond to the recommendations and suggestions and proposals that you indicate are, are of interest to you. Please remember that the process is just beginning in addressing this, these issues. We have done our plan and that's what we want to go forward with. So some of these completion dates aren't behind us and the objective has not been that by the time the SAC self-study committee or visiting team shows up here that we would have everything addressed. We won't. But it shows the direction that we're going and this is designed to give you information about what that direction is. The concerns that are raised today, we will note those and we will consider those in addressing our action plan. Of course, consideration will have to be given to budget requirements of those. Just for some of the game plans today, if the discussion on any one item goes beyond five minutes, then I'll call time so we'll get the opportunity to address everything that is brought forward. Uh, are there any questions about the process that will follow? Okay. If anybody else has a card they'd like to pass in, if you'll raise it, we'll get somebody to pick it up. Probably here's one over here. recommendations because those are things that we must do and then we'll move forward to the suggestions and then we'll move forward to the proposals. So if we run out of time today we will have addressed them in the order of the importance for the college as a whole. Uh, the first one is college recommendation 4 5 on page 14 in your action plan. If you'd like to turn to page 14. Good afternoon, and I appreciate all of you coming. Before I answer that specific uh, recommendation, Whoa. I want to give you a little bit of a background. The Division of Instruction, looking at 49 items, eight of which are recommendations for our
Can everybody hear me? Thank you. The second item that I would like to share with you is that we have created a notebook for each recommendation, suggestion, and proposal. And we've included the timeline as well in this. And in back of each recommendation, suggestion, and proposal, there will be documented proof that we have accomplished this goal. It can be in the form of uh, an APM recommendation, or it can be in the form of taking and Xeroxing the page from the college catalog, etc. And uh, this will be carried by each administrator in a division of instruction, and a copy will be uh, provided to the SACS Visiting Committee. I'd like to address the opticianry program. This is a recommendation. Of all the recommendations, this is the weakest one. We have uh, a very unique situation between the uh, Naval Station and ourselves regarding the opticianry program. Our faculty teach all the general education courses, and we utilize people from the Naval Station to teach our three opticianry courses. It's recommended that we get a full-time faculty member uh, for the opticianry program. It's a small program. There are budgetary implications. We have shared this information with the National Accrediting Association. We are employing members from the Naval Station to act two of them to be part of the Thomas Nelson adjunct fa faculty to oversee this program. Jean, since this is in your area, would you like to add to this? Well, I think what we've tried to do is explain the uniqueness of this program. And technically, if uh, they say we have to have a full-time faculty member for this program, then we're not going to be able to do that. So we have a choice between either doing away with this program, which is a very successful program, or hiring someone full-time. We're trying to look at a unique way of satisfying this recommendation without doing away with a very successful program. Whether, that'll, whether they'll buy that or not, we don't know. We were just accredited by the Commission on Opticianry uh, Accreditation, COA, and they made this recommendation to us that we have, have uh, full time faculty at the Naval Weapons Station be assigned or be on our faculty staff. The only way we can do that, of course, is to include them in our adjunct faculty staff. So that's what we've done. We hope that. that that gone through? Have Has there been that exchange so that there is the recognition of the full time? Yes, it was just a matter of us putting those people on our adjunct faculty staff. And we've done that with two people that are full time teachers at Nostra, the Naval Weapons Station. Were the questions answered? Everything ready? Okay. Moving on to the next one on page 15. Call it, we've moved now from recommendations to suggestions. Apparently there were no other recommendations that individuals would like to have addressed. Um, moving on to the suggestions, call it suggestion, Roman numeral 4, 1. Dr. Dalton? One of the major areas of concern is the amount of time that faculty spend with committee work. And we have come up, I personally, with uh, a proposal that uh, we plan to implement. It's already been designed with the number, maximum number of committee assignments a faculty member would engage in per semester. I am passing it on to Dean Wolf, who is chair of the Implementation Committee. It then goes before the President's staff, and then I will bring it before the Executive Committee 
of the Faculty Senate. Yes? Will those committees be weighted? Or will one committee assign an equal, one other committee assign it? Are all committees created equal here? Um, it, it will apply to the number of standing committees. We haven't, no, we have not waited. I, what I did it, before I made this recommendation was to survey all the community colleges. Uh, I called up several. They don't even have a statement uh, as to the number of committee assignments. We have a, another problem that we really have to look at, which is really not just in the purview of the Division of Instruction. And that is, uh, committees are across all three areas. And one of the things that was raised by Tom Long yesterday is, are we going to look at the entire committee structure? And this would have to be under the purview of the president. But in the meantime, we're making a recommendation to that effect. Also consider uh, at least look at committees like the curriculum committee as whoever's assigned to it it's one and only because of the amount of responsibility and maybe even as telecommunications begins to kick in and some of those I think ought to be considered absolutely see we're coming up with a minimum you know a maximum number okay per semester and then when it goes before the President's Committee, it becomes part of the negotiating process with the Executive Committee of uh, the Faculty Senate. And these things can come across, and we can negotiate that. And we're very open to it and add you know, additional comments. So it's not a closed situation. In negotiations, you have to have give and take. So we're coming up with a starting you know, statement, and then we'll move from there. But you can call up any community college in the state, let me know if it's in any of their policy statements. We would be the first in that regard to make a statement concerning that effect. Another uh, issue connected to uh, looking at committees came up yesterday, and that was the whole concept of accountability. So that in looking at committees and committee assignments, we'll be looking to the faculty to help us with monitoring the level of participation in these committees so we can have true equity as we talk about assignments and weight of responsibility. In addition, one of our recommendations is to uh, have Thursday from 2 to 3.30 uh, be a time when class uh, do not meet except under exceptional conditions. So that will permit faculty to play a role in this accountability area. This was suggestions that I received from many faculty members and we're recommending uh, this implementation. We had this several years ago uh, before my arrival at the college and somewhere it got lost and we're going to reinstitute that again as a proposal. The next item, you'll need to turn now back to page 10. We're now moving on to our college proposals. So those items that were must statements and should statements, where you had questions, we've addressed those. If there are any others that come up, feel free to continue to pass in the cards and we'll address them as long as our time permits. Okay? If you'll flip to page 10, College Proposal 3 2, Dr. Pippins. <laughs> this issue also came up yesterday and is probably one of the most important issues that we will address as a college family. And I shared yesterday if I step back to coming here in October, this issue came up over and over again. So it's definitely a priority in my mind. And I had asked. Uh, Dr. Dean Wolf, as the chair of the implementation committee, to go through all of the executive summary items and mark those that would address morale. And she came back with a report that all of them address morale. Because in point of fact, it would not be in this self-study if it weren't of concern to someone. So following on the national model, my commitment to you as president 
my pact with you is to address the issues in this executive summary. And what I would ask, as I shared yesterday also, in the context of feelings and morale being a very personal issue, that you would commit to me that if we address the issues that we could declare uh, morale up at Thomas Nelson. Any other questions on that issue? Ryan, okay. Yes. That proposal three one or three two? That was three two. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to help you more on three two. Well, I guess I wanted to talk about three one. <laughs> As a, a, a somewhat objective person coming here from the outside, it's amazing how many planning documents we have. <laughs> and that was an issue in the self-study document. And I am concerned about coordinating those efforts and bringing them together. Uh, we are planning uh, an April 20th meeting, our first uh, campus-wide town meeting, to begin the planning process and the identification of goals and uh, strategic issues for the organization. Um, Mike Quanti is chairing that committee that will be putting that meeting together for me. Do you want to talk a little bit about this, Mike? Uh, what we're thinking about now for the meeting on the 20th is to identify some emerging issues that the president's been talking about since she came here. You've heard them, a lot of them came up through this self-study process. And <coughs> shortly, you'll probably be getting a survey from us. So it will, we'll keep it short and simple as much as possible to help us focus attention for the meeting on the 20th on what the key issues are and where the college community is in terms of understanding them, whether you need more information about an issue, whether it's something that's important that we address immediately, or whether it's something we can do some planning on, put it short range or long range in our planning. So on the 20th, hopefully a lot of that will come together and we'll start a process that will lead to a simplified planning structure that everybody can buy into by getting their input in at the beginning rather than reacting to plans that have been made somewhere in a dark room that nobody knows about. So hopefully it will be a very open process. But um, that's where we are in our thinking about that. Um, in terms of the planning process that I have forwarded to the Planning and Implementation Committee and Dr. Templin, before he left, I had very specific instructions that if I couldn't explain it in two pages, that it was too complicated. And we got it down to a page and a half. I don't know that it would make the process any easier, but it should be easier to understand. And we've tried to tie it in with the rhythms of the institution. So the things like review of the college mission will take place as part of the SACS process so that we incorporate all the work that gets done in the SACS process at the 10-year and 5-year marks with the regular planning rhythms of the college so that we don't have one group planning one year and another group planning another year, things like that. Are there any specific questions about any of that? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item, the question was college proposed on page 11, college proposal 3-5, and the individual asked that it be addressed in terms of accountability issues. As an early read, it seems that accountability is a key component of the morale issues on campus. And I find this item interesting because one piece of it is the professional improvement, which will be addressed through a BCCS policy 
the other side is the accountability. And that's one of the issues that we will be addressing as a college family. Uh, we've tried in every situation that's come up under my presidency to monitor accountability, and I think you'll see that increasingly. I'm not sure if somebody wants more specifics in terms of responding to that question. Part of that will come from how we as a management team look at evaluations that move up the system, and we'll be looking to see that there's accountability, that if someone is rated as performing excellently, that there's some documentation for that. I don't know if that's another part of the concern that people have. Yeah. Okay. Is, that, is that question answered? I'm not sure. I need help. I need some response from the person asking. Let's say someone has a plan document. I'm sorry. Let's say someone has a professional development plan, mm -hmm. and they turn it in and they check it issue that we have to address as a college family. Uh, accountability means everybody else except the person who's answering the question. That we all say that, but when it comes down to putting those types of systems in place, that really makes people nervous. And I guess my basic feeling is that that's a topic that we're going to have to discuss a lot and just implement across the board so that people see on any given issue. If you move back to the whole concept of committees, and people being overburdened. What does it mean if you monitor that system and expect to have some accountability? That's going to make somebody nervous. If somebody's responsible for getting reports out in a timely manner, if we monitor that, that's going to make another person nervous. So then we talk about accountability. We have to work on that, I think, as a family. There has to be a certain level of trust and a feeling that it will be, there will be equal treatment, and we will approach it from that perspective. Does that help, Bobby? Next item is uh, call the same page or flip the page, page 12. College proposal 3 6. Uh, this question is very connected. Um, I wrote in the column here I need Erlene's help, John's help, and Vic Thompson's help. Because again, I don't think you can talk about accountability, performance, monitoring without involvement of all members of the college family. And over the course of the next few months, we will be looking at systems and strategies for monitoring what takes place in the institution, uh, establishing levels of accountability, and I think creating enough trust that people feel comfortable with that. But I would see the faculty being involved, the staff being involved, and our human resources people being involved, and we'll take all of those groups to put a system like that in place. Any questions on that? Notice how quiet it got when talking about accountability. <laughs> We're going to jump back now to a recommendation. If you'll flip to page 13, college recommendation 4, 3. <laughs> Dr. Dalton. One of the most important items is that students actually can visualize what's expected of them uh, regarding general education uh, requirements. And in this uh, present college catalog that will be coming onto campus at the end of this month, uh, we have devised a table uh, for, which is very readable for students, faculty, and staff to see the general education requirements uh, across the board. It's already, uh, if anyone wants to see a copy uh, from our catalog, I have it with me today. Thank you. Any other questions about that issue? Okay. Um, seems like somebody put in a number that doesn't exist, so in order to cover both bases, if you'll look now at College <coughs> Proposal 4.3 also. College Proposal 4.3 is on page 16. 
Dr. Dalton. One of the principles of academic freedom is for faculty to be in charge of their courses of study. And so what I have done is I have written a memorandum to Dr. Vic Thompson asking that the faculty evaluation committee take a look at our non-traditional courses, for example, telecourses, and to write an evaluative instrument for this type of course of study. Any questions? Uh, yeah, there is one about the timing on that. It says that, uh, I guess it was 4-4 four, four, or 4-3, four, uh, that the dean of instruction will charge the committee by doing this by March 1994. Uh, no, that is when I was going to send the recommendation to the faculty senate. Um, and I recognize that it will take, go into the fall, you know, and okay, I'm hoping that uh, something will be coming by the end of spring, then the faculty senate as a whole has to meet right. and discuss it, and there's a governance process. Right, I was just kind of amazed. It says yes. the faculty evaluation committee will develop the form by the end of yeah. the No, the target date in this <coughs> yeah. case I was, uh, yeah. pertains to okay. getting the materials out versus so the it's implementation. It's the yeah. yeah. So it's the wording of the answer. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Yes. I might just make the point that was made yesterday that it's not really an evaluation form. That language is probably a little confusing. It's the student reaction to instruction that we're talking about. So if you're confused about that. Any other questions on that issue? Okay, our next one then on page 19. College Proposal 413. Dr. Dolgen. One of the most important groups that we have at Thomas Nelson Community College is our adjunct faculty. We have close to 289 adjunct faculty working on this campus each semester. And as I have uh, indicated to the adjunct faculty during the orientation period, we would, not, we would be turning students away in droves uh, if they were not part of the Thomas Nelson Community College family. Uh, in this particular instance, we have to follow BC CS 29 uh, proposal. It's mandated. And if you notice in that, uh, we use that for promotion and rank. Uh, the ca criteria that we have to look at under that is the years of teaching experience, years of related occupational uh, experience, professional and scholarly activities, community service, and academic uh, pr preparation. The major problem facing our adjunct faculty deals with years of experience for them to get promoted uh, into the academic rank. We have made a recommendation to substitute years of work experience to be placed in the teaching, years of teaching category. That proposal will be going to Dean Wolf and uh, part of the implementation process, and then we'll go before the President's Staff Committee. And I will also discuss this with the Executive Committee of the Faculty Senate. We're moving now to Chapter 5. If you'll turn to page 29. College Proposal 5, 8. Many years we've had an equipment uh, trust fund. 
when it first started, we were told that after five years, uh, materials and equipment could be used for other purposes at the institution. Unfortunately, this has not occurred. We have not received this kind of uh, permission. However, what we are doing is we set aside a subcommittee. And this subcommittee has received input from the various divisions as to the numbers of faculty members who still do not have computers. Uh, the second thing that has to happen is we have to make sure that these computers are in working condition. They will not be distributed to faculty if they are not in good working condition. The third is that we have to set aside funds both within the division as well as my discretionary funds if I get some you know, for next year because of all the different things that are occurring regarding retirements and such. I'm hoping we have some budget monies and that we maintain our discretionary funds because they've been so important to the division of instruction uh, and to try to update you know, these computers. And so that's what we're doing right now. We've also gotten requests from the Division of Student Services, and um, they will be considered as well. Any questions? I'm sorry to keep asking. I don't want to dominate. I'm just interested in that last part of that, Dr. Baldwin. Yes. Uh, where the latest computer equipment would be given to the faculty that were the most advanced programs that they're teaching, like business engineering, some in math. Uh, is consideration being given to that? What we're considering is the level of expertise each faculty member has uh, in, in, in the distribution model. There's some people who are novices and can, may just want to experiment. There's some people who are more advanced. And so that will uh, play a, a role as well. And uh, you're right, because we're getting updated computers in uh, the business area and the engineering areas. But unfortunately, many of our computers, Bobby, are uh, 286s and 386s, and they're not, you know, uh, they're not good, you know, for our needs. And uh, we have an academic computer lab that needs 486s. And we've been slowly adding to it, but we just haven't been provided with the funds. Fortunately, in this ETF allocation, we're putting in 486s for the English writing classes and for the business classes in 119 and 119A. And we need, we need these as well for uh, drafting. So we have a tremendous problem. Uh, we need the 486s because most of our computers will be outdated uh, as of this summer once, as I said yesterday, uh, Windows goes out there. So we have a plan uh, and we're utilizing everything that we can, but I'm really pleased that there's such an interest in technology because if you remember, five and a half years ago, so many people were not interested. And here we have people interested, ready to move forward and the budget is hurting us. The next line again is along those same lines. On um, page 28, college proposal 5-7, also dealing with the uh, recommendations of the telecommunications committee. As you uh, are aware, uh, the president of the college uh, created a committee with uh, certain charges regarding uh, telecommunications. Um, I'd like uh, Eileen Schweitzer to go into this particular proposal since she has chaired that committee and will report directly to uh, the president. I think uh, what we have here is that the president recognizes the importance of uh, the whole issue of technology. This was an important question that was raised yesterday. And technology is not only important for the division of instruction, but it crosses the entire college. And so what has to be created at the institution, uh, in my opinion, probably is you know, a position which the president you know, uh, 
may be considering. Uh, I don't want to speak on, on her behalf, uh, which is very important to all the three uh, administrative units. But I know that this is an important area for instruction, and because um, Eileen has been chairing this committee um, for the past couple of years, I want her to give you as much input as possible. Dr. Pippins has identified the telecommunications support needs of the institution as a priority for the college, and we're very appreciative of that endorsement. As you can all understand, however, this is not going to be an overnight accomplishment. I believe Dr. Pippins has made a commitment working through a number of the support structures that are in place to address the needs um, that have been identified in this proposal. As Dr. Dolgen said, there has been a, an expression of commitment to a position that could he head the telecommunications process as a full-time position. Of course, with the financial considerations that are being examined right now, what shape that will take um, is, is still being considered, but I believe we are definitely looking at a position to undertake um, responsibility in that area. In conjunction with that, of course, some of you are very familiar with the VCCS Task Force Report, which has been received a little, uh, approximately a month ago, and in that they talked about decentralizing some of the positions that are now in Richmond, and we might benefit from that expertise as it's made available to the campus. In addition, one of the other proposals that has been addressed is the need for uh, computer repair support. Many of you have been involved in that process on an ad hoc basis, uh, informal networking and so forth. We recently completed interviews for a part-time computer repair position. So as you can see, there are a variety of approaches that are being taken to address that need in this proposal. Any further questions on this issue? Okay, um, if you'll turn to page 42, we're moving on to chapter 6. College proposal 6-2, Dean Calvin. The question that was raised regarding this one was what vehicle could be used to provide feedback bottom-up and to build morale and teams? Okay. Item 6 2 was one of the least I found, one of the more interesting uh, proposals in the uh, self study process. Uh, I think that one of the problems in the proposal itself is where it says that all administrators are being evaluated by all levels of subordinates. And in many cases, the level of subordinates are so far removed, for example, like evening housekeeping, where they're off campus evaluating the present the constructs of efficiency and effectiveness. It makes it very difficult. But there's little question that we have a need to change our evaluation system. However, it would be very difficult in terms of the number of you folks to <coughs> define those constructs that would be used. Uh, I think the issue is one that uh, would have to be looked at, and as I think I said in the answer, that would be have to be very, very carefully defined and also very careful in terms of implementation. <coughs> also very difficult to implement in terms of a total evaluation. And I know we spent time here today talking about the evaluation or student reaction or client reaction. And maybe the term evaluation itself is one that will be very problematic in terms of a new uh, implementation. I think that Dr. Pippins related with her answer yesterday with something we will address that. I think there was another one that came in on that same item. The question was, are we working towards a consistent evaluation program for all divisions with a more precise determination of who evaluates administrators, supervisors, etc.? Want to comment further? I can only comment from the administrative division on that. Uh, I certainly can't comment in terms of the instruction and student services division. 
and it's one that when we first uh, spoke in our first meeting regarding the response, that we would have to look at the institution, not from specific divisions. And uh, right now, there have been problems, and I think most administrators would agree, in the administration instruments as they're, uh, they're written. And the administration instruments, or administrative evaluation instruments as they're written, do very little now to appropriately evaluate administrative efficiency and effectiveness. For those of you who've looked at those recently, and especially for the administrators who are evaluating other administrators, will find an insufficiency in those instruments. Uh, as far as are we working our way toward that, we're going to respond in terms of trying to find a better evaluation system. But in terms of coming back, will all administrators be evaluated for all levels of support? Uh, not to my mind. This was an important question yesterday, and the evaluation process is a key component of morale on this campus, that's my read. I think that came through very loud and clear during the interview process, and I've heard a lot about that in the few months that I've been here. Um, whereas you can't make a commitment to a specific structure, I wanted everybody present to understand that we do hear you, and that we will work hard to create vehicles for you to com communicate your concerns. Uh, there are strategies that people use when you put teams together to evaluate a person at a certain level with people from a variety of levels on that team giving feedback. I think it also says something to me at least about your feelings in terms of how we manage supervisors. That often when people feel that they need a specific opportunity to evaluate their supervisor, they're saying not comfortable with the job this person is doing and I don't think anybody knows that except me. And what we can commit to you is that we will be looking at these issues and we will be looking carefully at the, the skills and strengths of the supervisors um, as far as the Thomas Nelson family. Any further questions on that issue? Okay. We'll turn on to page 43. College proposal 6-4. And the question that comes with this one, Dr. Dalton, is an extension of that. How are monies for initiatives determined? At what point of budget planning are initiatives introduced? Regarding budget planning, it should come from the bottom up as well as the top down. Uh, within the Division of Instruction throughout the entire year and well prior to the budget cycle in the spring semester, division chairs and other administrators in a Division of Instruction are requested to go to faculty and staff within their areas to uh, come up with initiatives that are important. That's part of the interrelationship from bottom up. And um, then a summary of these statements come before us usually in January and we put these initiatives together. The major problem that we have had is really the lack of money. And this is not an excuse, this is a reality. But what we have done continuously uh, since my arrival here, when I first came here, there was never any kind of strategic planning that took place. And so with the limited amount of monies, we started having a five-year plan and yearly implementation plans. They were published in directions, and they should be discussed and distributed at the divisional levels. And because of this, we were able to do a great deal, even with our limited resources. Uh, the creation of an academic uh, computing lab, uh, reading uh, lab with individualized reading, a wellness center are just a few examples. So that is the process. Now, if that's not going on, okay, we need to discuss it. We need to open up these lines of, of communication. Because strategic planning focuses on goals and uses limited resources to get initiatives done. 
Any questions? Don't you not just like to express some of the feelings that the committees when they wrote this? In talking to the division chair in a survey done by one of the subcommittees of the academic labs, there was concern expressed about um, having enough money for lab equipment for tapes, for instance, in the foreign language lab, having to use their own monies in some cases, etc. And I think one of the intents of the subcommittee was where something is considered to be a need versus an initiative. Like, do you take care of lab expenses before we have initiatives or travel money? Or, and if we do do this, we wonder why on the surveys um, people felt like they did not have enough money for lab supplies. It isn't the equipment, it's the supplies. Are, um, first of all, our largest growing areas are the liberal arts, and I think you're referring to this or uh, just so across the entire board. Okay. Uh, yes. Science labs mm -hmm. as well as. Yeah. First of all, let me directly answer the one that foreign language takes. That never surfaced at any one of our meetings. I never even heard that particular request. Just As an example, because I think part of this is communication. And I think we have to strengthen our communication. What we have done is with discretionary funds is to target student needs first. And so we have gone into and allocated money for these kinds of things that you're talking about. However, we have also requested during budget three times additional monies in the two largest growing areas. And we've gotten some small sums of money, but not enough to cover the expenses as students increase. The third aspect that we're doing right now is one of the proposals here that came out of self-study. And that is to reallocate some of our resources. And we have come up with a model, we are not finished, taking into uh, consideration some of the things that you're mentioning. The number of faculty within a division, the number of students that that division has to cater to, and we're trying to allocate the existing monies. If you look at the individual divisional budgets, they range between $25,000 to $35,000. And even when we reallocate the resources based on criteria, equitable criteria, uh, that will only be a short term. We probably need uh, another $20,000 for the three major divisions and the learning resource area as well. They don't even have a computer uh, maintenance uh, budget. They have $25,000 and we have over 400 computers on campus. Is that correct? So we have problems in the Learning Resource Center as well as the growing divisions. This is what we're trying to do right now, but these are short term. We have to address the issue from a long term perspective as well. Yes. One thing that seems obvious tied into Mike's uh, campaign on planning, if we need to combine planning with financial planning here, too. It seems like there's an issue associated with that, and in particular with this whole idea of uh, computer technology and things of that nature. That, that's really apparently something that will be a financial drain on the institution, but a very important one. And I'd just like to uh, ask the administration that as you look at allocation of resources, We've got to ask questions of priorities, too. Absolutely. Maybe budget slots that we're filling now, maybe we need to look at. Should they be filled or not, based on some of these needs I hear on repair of computers and maintenance of systems? I think uh, what's happening now uh, with uh, some of the uh, state reduction issues, uh, we're going to have to see, look at the college, not just the division of instruction, but all the various divisions. We're going to have a tremendous impact of staff leaving us, some with uh, some very specialized expertise and um, others where we can combine, you know, uh, different uh, departments. So 
this is going to be a very rough year from with all of these things that are happening. Loss of staff in some key areas. With some of those positions, we may or may not be able to replace them. We don't have to replace everyone. We have to look at what is most critical to the institution and look at the whole budget process. And this will affect not only the division of instruction, but the other two divisions as well. It's a college-wide situation. And you're right, you have to tie your the most important initiatives to the budgetary process, absolutely. Just as a follow-up on that, uh, in terms of institutional priorities, technology is the institutional priority in terms of our internal workings. The reality is that with limited resources, we cannot do more with the less. The only route for that is technology. At the same time, we will really need your support because we're going to have to make some really hard decisions as a college family. And everybody has to be comfortable with technology as a priority because it will have implications. And I thought also as I was sitting there that the issue of resources came up so often. And there are some things that we can do in that area and I'd like to take this opportunity to put those on the table and again solicit your support. One is strong support of our foundation. They've been doing a lot of excellent work. That is one avenue we have for bringing additional resources into the college, and Jack has done a fantastic job. And even after his commitment this year, I went back to him and said, Jack, I want you to raise another $325,000 for purposes that I feel are important that I can't see how we'll handle within our budget. So he needs all of our support. And that, a lot of the work that he does is possible because of the partnerships that he maintains with our business partners. So again, when you hear about initiatives in that area, those aren't meaningless. They don't take away from us. They allow us to do some of the things that we need to do. And the other area that Dean Wolf and Dean Dolgen will be addressing is the whole area of, re of retention. Retention with maintenance of high standards to really look as an institution at how we support students who are part of our college family that you know, we may think do things like look at those four first four weeks in a semester or the first six weeks and look at where we're losing students and what might we do differently in order to maintain uh, the levels of enrollment in the institution. But again, I, I sat here and I saw everybody's sad faces thinking these are all the exciting things that we want to do and every time somebody raises an issue, the whole concept of limitations because of fiscal constraints come back. I see uh, as a priority for me as a college president bringing resources into this institution. When I was interviewed by one of the reporters, he said to me, what's the difference between a president of a two-year institution and a president of a four-year institution? And my first response was none. You know, skills are skills. We both need the same skills. But upon further reflection, I came back and I said, my job is harder because it's easier to get people to give to William and Mary than it is to Thomas Nelson Community College. But again, I want you to understand that that is a priority for me to give you the resources that you need to do your job. And I'm committed to working with Jack to get that done. Any other questions on this issue? Okay. Um, our last item, so if you have any others you want to send in, send them in quickly, is uh, on page 47, College Proposal 611. to get some help. 
The uh, handbook has been completed. It has not been distributed across campus. We were waiting for approval of that uh, policy. So hold your breath just a little longer, and soon there will be a handbook out to tell you how to do it. We uh, wrote it in real English, not grantees, so you should be able to read it as well as have it on your shelf. And uh, if you have any questions about anything in there, don't hesitate to ask us. But we should have that to you very soon, if not before you leave. Certainly when you come back in the fall, there'll be all the information you ever wanted to know about grants and how to get them. Are there any other questions about that? Are we working on any grants, Mike? No. Uh, we are, as a matter of fact. Uh, we met with the telecommunications committee. I use we in a very broad sense because I wasn't there. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, Malcolm Baber, I think, was at the last meeting, and Mike Bruno's been meeting with the telecommunications committee as he could throughout the year. And we plan to submit a Title III application to help prepare the college backbone for technology. We, uh, to show you how much progress we made last year, we were using the college's preparation of the backbone as one of our institutional matches. And now we decided we'd go back and ask them to help us with the wiring infrastructure and the um, computers, the hardware, all of that kind of thing that we need to put an infrastructure in place so that we can concentrate our efforts at the college on the staff development and the applications part of it. So that's the big grant we're working on now. We're uh, working on a, along with John Dever and uh, Maxine Beatty on a grant to uh, continue our summer transition program that works with promising minority students to help them get into college, get the skills they need to be successful, and uh, we hope to have that completed and sent out later in the month. And we're juggling a couple of others, but we're always glad to take on a little more work in that area if somebody has a good idea. But We'll bring in some of that money that will help us do some things. We'll be glad to help you find the right source to contact. And we will be contacting some of you very soon about some ideas for Title III, so be prepared. <laughs> yes, I see Sally shaking your head. You will be contacted. OK, thank you. That's the last of the questions that you posed. Are there anything else that you'd like to have addressed that has appeared in our self study? Well, we have our last question. I'd like to ask Bobby Wright to stand and really say thank you to her for all of her hard work in this process. <laughs> to see the results of her hard work, but I've also uh, experienced her hard questions. And we had a little conversation about this, and she was a plan. Because that's, those are the kind of questions we need to ask. And I'd like to see this as a, an ongoing dialogue that sets the stage for our future strategic planning. So I appreciate all of your hard work, Bobby, and perhaps your hard questions even more. And I want to really say thank you to all of you who came out this afternoon. Um, Dr. Wolf and I have had some discussions yesterday about how many people we could expect, and I feel really good about the participation we've had in both of our sessions, and I want to say thank you. One last question. <laughs> um, turn to page 45. College Proposal 6 7. Can you tell me? I'm always glad to have an opportunity to address this. There are three or four dimensions in this issue, one of which is the question of funding. We talked about the allocation of funding before. We have the normative data already from the American Fiscal Plan Administrators, National Association, from Kubo and Washington, from Southern Association of College and Universities, uh, 
We have four or five national and regional normative quartiles. And even with our own Southern Association data can be evaluated during our self-study. We know that all of our program funding in the institution, with the exception of one point fund, is at the second or third quartile, or even in some cases better than the third, normally third quartile level. The one program that falls into a problem for which we will probably receive a recommendation will be the physical plant, which we are below the first quartile level of funding. And we have been for some time, actually coming out of the mid-1980s. The previous president and I had a plan in 1990 to try to correct this. We all know what happened in 1990. What happened in 1990? <laughs> 1990 was the first year of our first year of a 24% decrease in state general funds. And you folks know, we went without increases. We suffered immensely in terms of a lot of personal services, operating funds, benefit changes. And the only way you can make the reallocation during that time is to make two choices that none of us wanted to make. Certainly in our, and I certainly heard about it from uh, our plant personnel about why can't we make this remediation, which I promised when I first came in here. We have some difficulties within the institution, and that plant fund funding is one that certainly needs to be remediated when you're below the first quartile level. None of the other program funds within the institution are anywhere near that kind of funding and sufficiency. The second part in terms of building maintenance. Our surveys and the feedback that we've gotten from folks in terms of formal reports and all reflect that we've made substantial progress in that area. The third area that we are not happy with, certainly one that we're working on, working toward greater improvement, we're even looking to transition toward outsourcing, is that possible the uh, housekeeping. We have a remedial program that Ray Wharton and his folks are working on in terms of providing a better housekeeping plan for this institution. The environment has been one issue that I've had since I came here in 19. And we have not made the progress that I'd like to see. I was used to a better facility operation where I came from than here. Uh, the first time we make some of these corrections, hopefully we can make gradual progress. We will never be able to make the kind of remediation I hope for. The second thing is that we are looking forward to one, and probably, as you know, it's on the street now, our renovation of about one and a half million dollars, and also the second part the ISS building, Construction Support Services building, and part of that too will also be the renovation of about two and a half million dollars a second renovation. We are long overdue. Those are not excuses in any way for housekeeping. Some of our facilities have not provided the most aesthetic one, two, cleanliest conditions possible. These need to be remediated. So there are three parts to that. We were uncertain to the self-study itself was addressing the total physical plan operation for certain parts, but I want to address them both in terms of plant maintenance, housekeeping, and especially the issue which is looming long before us in terms of that of the adjustment of the uh, plant quartile uh, funding standards, at least in terms of some association and national plan Ray, do you have uh, anything you want to say to that? Any question, all the questions answered on that, Bob? Uh, is outsourcing all that's being considered I mean, like on cleanliness, because like when we had some extra funds last year, we outsourced. You know, we got well, we really did. We only outsourced very limited, not in terms of the kind of outsourcing we're talking about now. We're talking about an outsourcing plan, a comprehensive housekeeping uh, outsource, not components, special function. We're talking about a comprehensive operation. Uh, we're also feeling pressure, as you well know, from the state. That was part of the government's plan. We're finding it very difficult to proceed in terms of uh, trying to keep those kinds of positions wherever possible. They want us to outsource. There are certain kinds of functional categories that are higher priority. Housekeeping has always been, and I think you all have seen that in the paper, that's been one of those that's been delineated as the state is pushing uh, toward outsourcing. And more and more we're getting into marginal analysis. Uh, the housekeeping transition, and it looks like that we're about to, in fact, state it that way. Let's put it another way. The Workforce Training Act, Transition Act that we have, uh, is probably going to create more of an opportunity than we've ever had in the past so that people themselves aren't disadvantaged. Can I add to that just for a second? In addition to outsourcing, uh, Bobby, when we're putting together the, the standards 
for the outsourcing, there are very rigorous standards. So that if we do have a contractor come in, we're going to make sure that the standards that they have to comply with are acceptable to the college in terms of the level of cleanliness that we're looking for. We're outsourcing plus we're improving standards. Let's see, cool question. Um, Any other questions? Well, I'd like to remind you that this is just the start. All we've identified is where we want our college to go. And we've laid out the plan for us to move forward on. But we've got a long way to go, and the only one whose job is finished when the SACS visiting team leaves is Bobby's. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming. <laughs>